My name is Dr. Nancy McLean, and I am an associate professor at Dalhousie University Faculty of Agriculture. So, so far we collected data from 243 first cut silage samples. Some farms we visited twice. We do have samples from every province. So all of the silages were alfalfa grass-based. We concentrated on three types of silage systems, bunker silos, conventional tower silos, and round wrap bale silages. And in terms of quality, all three systems produced pretty much the same range of quality. So from minimum to maximum and averages, we're all very close. You can make any of the common silage systems work for you, but you have to you have to understand what to include and what not to include. We milk 60, 65 cows. I've been farming going into my 26th year. Uh, it's a two row freestyle barn and we feed round bale silage. When I took over the farm in 97, it was round bales then. Before that, it was square bale hay. So yeah, we, we've always been round bales. For our farm, it works great. Uh, it's easy, the barn is set up to feed round bales and yeah, we have no issues. There's minimal labor. Two people can do most of it. Makes for a few long nights, but yeah, it works well. Number one advantage, I guess, based on farm size is the economics of it and uh, reduced labor required. And as far as feeding, you know exactly where your best feed is. So you can, if extra incentive days come along, you can pick and choose and feed what you want to feed and you will get more production. We milk 60 cows in the Thai soft facility and we feed a partial mixed ration. We grow a mixed forage that we store in tower silos and feed out using TMR mixer. And we also put our cows out to grass for five months of the year. So we harvest our silage. Usually we do two cuts in a year, starting around the 1st of June. It's a nice system to use. As long as you keep up with the maintenance regularly in the silo, the unloader can last for many years. And it's not something you have to go out and buy things for every year. You don't have to buy plastic. You don't have to worry about that. You can just come in, set up, and get the feed in the silo. So we really like using our tower silos. For us, it's nice to be able to just push a button and flick a switch and we have silage coming out. Some challenges we face, the silo requires regular maintenance and sometimes it can take a little while to fix or it's harder to fix since we have to climb up there. But overall, we like the efficiency of it and the fact that we only have to use one small square of plastic every year to, to cover the silo. It's a nice way to feed our silage. Uh, we've got a little bit of everything to be honest. We are bunker silos primarily, but the last couple of years we've had really good uh, cropping years. So we've had a uh, surplus of forage. So we've been round baling uh, quite a bit as well. And then we also do have a tower silo for high moisture corn. We milk about 110 cows, probably have about uh, 220 head in total. We farm about, I don't know, 250 acres or so. Probably a hundred of that is uh, is corn silage and the rest would be uh, haylage, uh, grass, alfalfa mixes. We really like the bunks and, uh, and feeding uh, out from the bunks and the consistency of the feed. Fields go in kind of uh, layered in the bunk. I guess in theory from the front to the back of the bunk, we're always feeding the same thing. So we really like that. For us, it's a three person uh, process. Uh, someone's on the harvester, someone's hauling and someone's packing. Once those bunks are full, then we have to transition into making some round bales. Uh, usually first cut though, we'll all go into the bunker silos and then uh, we'll just have to see how, it, uh, how the year unfolds. The key thing is that all the systems can make really good forage, um, you know, just as long as you're following the, the right protocol. As farmers, you're on your own farm, you see what you do unless you're reading every magazine or, or getting the research distributed to you. You don't know what other people are doing and, and what if there are better options. So it's nice to have these research projects to share the information 
with all farmers so that we can all do a better job. It helps you make a decision on which type of feeding system you would like to go with, um, both economically and quality-wise. There's a lot of different expenses that go along with farming these days, so I think it's really important to think about how efficient you are uh, with whatever type of system you're using or what types of forages you're growing. Looking at some of the results from Nancy's research, I think the big thing is that every system is good and can work. The big thing is to get your butt in gear early enough in the year and get your first cut done kind of timely, and that'll really set you up uh, for the rest of the year. Forage is gonna have the biggest influence on your production. So that's, if you're gonna spend money or invest time, it should be in your forage and whatever system you decide to go with. I mean, that's a personal opinion, but uh, yeah, don't skimp on forage because that's what you get a few weeks of the year to make feed for your cows and you gotta feed that all year. So it's the biggest thing. Forage is king, like it's, say cash is king, well, forage is king as well. <laughs>